Hello, my name is Ariana Vafadari. I am half French, half Iranian. I'm an opera singer and composer. I left Iran at the age of five. Loving and singing opera builds my link with music and arts. Operas are passionate and strong stories, mostly about things that would never happen in normal people's life. They tell of exceptional destinies that end up in very tragic ways. Carmen, Dido, Leila, Lucia. The stronger the love or happiness, the more unbearable the fall. And because of my own personal story, I thought the stories of opera were those of normal life. Many times in my life, when I thought everything was quiet, peaceful and happy, something happened to end that moment, tragically. And, for example, leaving Iran, leaving Iran because of the war, the tragic death of people I loved, violent moments, disease. Well, for me, everything was very serious and my opera teachers laughed so much when they saw me singing love opera songs very, very serious, very seriously. So for me, it was natural that the most beautiful music or art came from tragic and intense stories. And I thought that tragedy, fear or violence feed our emotions. Then my father died in a very tragic way and I was suffocating. I was depressed, skinny, and of course I had less work. And the only thing that made me feel good at that time was improvising on the gatas. The gatas are the mantras of my Zoroastrian community. There are poetry, poems, or mantras. And I started composing songs for the first time on these, on these gatas, on these poems. I felt that I needed to create something totally new and personal, as I thought my story and my pain were unique. And I wrote almost all the songs in D minor, which is the saddest scale. Mozart would use it to express death. And I mixed it, mixed this occidental scales, scale with oriental scales, with more light, different atmosphere. And it cured me. While I was singing the songs, it took more and more importance in my life. And I was feeling better. But one thing I didn't expect is that people receive the same thing, the same emotion I was giving. For example, there's this song, Hunting Melody, I wrote for my father's death. And people keep writing me that they listen to this very particular song when they lose their father. They don't even know me. They just write me, I'm listening to this song, I lost my father and it gives me great emotion and I'm feeling so better. So I just realized that everything I was expressing through these compositions, I was giving the same emotion to people and even in a language nobody understands because the Gatas are in this very old language, Avesta, that nobody speaks. They felt the same emotion and it was going to the same place in their body, in their memory. Opera singers are very joyful people. We sing very serious and dark pieces. And when we get out of stage, we make jokes and have fun like kids. It is as though having expressed our darkest fears and pains, we feel light as butterflies. When I took courses at the actor's studio with Jack Walter, the first day I thought I was in a madhouse. People would express their feelings and emotions very loud. They would shout, cry, laugh. It was unbearable. And I couldn't find my way, the way to my emotions. It took some time and when I found the way, I couldn't stop crying. And I was facing my emotions, my fears, my anger. And during the day, it was horrible. And at night, my dreams were incredibly light and beautiful. 
I learned not to cheat with my emotions, to ask myself what is really moving me or making me angry. And when you express emotions truthfully, you feel lighter and you're cured. Pain can be beautiful. Tears should be shared and all sad stories can become an expression of art. I have always loved about Iranians the moments they share around art, when they gather to play music or read poetry and show their tears, revealing their emotions. This is very unique. Many years later, when I didn't have any tragedy to deal with around me, I felt it was the right time to work deeper within myself. And I had to work on something very hard of my personal life and my therapist said, it can take one year, it can take 10 years, but you have to go in the cave and face it. And I thought, no way it's going to take 10 years, not even five or two years. And I remember this story of Clarissa Pincola Estes in her book, Woman That Run With The Wolves. There is this American-African story, Manawe, so I will briefly tell you the story. This young man, Manawe, wants to marry two beautiful twins. And he goes to their father and says, I would love to marry the girls. But the father says, you can marry them if you know their names, if you can tell their names. But there is no way he can know the names unless he goes in late at night and listen to the two girls talking to each other and they call each other's name. So he sent his little dog to spy the girls late at night. The dog goes under the window, hears the names and go to Manawe. But on his way, he can smell incredible meat and he goes to fetch the meat, eat the meat and then realize he forgot the names. Oh, he has to go back to the girls, listen to the names, goes to Manawe and again on his way, he can smell incredible muscadi cake. He goes to eat the cake, forgets the name, has to go back again to the girls and think this time I'm not going to be distracted and I go straight to my master. He goes to Manawe, gives him, him the names of the girls and Manawe can finally marry the two girls. So what is very interesting for me and Clarissa Pinkola Estes is explaining everything very clearly is that you have to face the duality of woman our, my own, I had to face my own duality. Who is the ex external woman? I, am, I can be a daughter, a wife, 
uh, and a singer, a mother, and I can have this very different inner woman in me that I can face with all these emotions, the depth emotions I have in me. And also this little dog is intuition. So it's the intuition to understand those two women. And also this little dog is trying not to get distracted by anything. And in my therapeutic work, I was really, I tried and I thought I'm not going to be distracted by anything. I'm going to stay on this very dark and terrible emotion and I'm going to solve this problem, not in five years, certainly. And so that's what I did. I wanted to cry all the time. I was living all the time with these emotions and it was not easy for me at all. And of course, not easy for my family that were very nice to support it. And, and also for my work, sometimes I go for a week or a few weeks at a time and stay with my colleagues. And I thought they're going to hate me, but this didn't happen at all. And it's as they didn't even notice. And I could cure so quickly. And within, I think, six months or a little bit more, I felt release and free again. My last album, Anahita, is not autobiographical as Gata, my first album, is. But to be able to create, I needed a story that moves me profoundly. The myth of Anahita, the issue of water and environment, and the place of femininity moves me deeply. And this is why I could create this new album. And the vibrations of both music and emotions awakes the same story in different people. This young woman called Anaita, like the goddess, is very different from me. But I know what is dreaming, being desperate, having deep anger, falling down, and hopefully finding the way to happiness. And this is where I'm telling my own story, how spirituality leaded me to happiness. I'm not talking about religion, but my link with the invisible and how singing on the old mantras or prayers of my Zoroastrian community changed my voice, my link with music and my life. Thank you.
When my album Anaita was created, I understood something incredible. In French, the sea, you say la mer, and the mother, you say also la mer. It's the same sound. Water is nourishing, but also water is a link with memory. Water carries the story of my mother and my ancestors, and I could feel it in my body, in my cells. And the other thing that appeared to me when I sang all the songs of Anaïta from the beginning to the end, to this last song, which is called Le Chant de l'eau, Song of Water, is the incredible feeling of freedom. It's as it, the word of water expanded my consciousness. As a conclusion, I want to say that I don't consider myself as a victim. I try to accept that we can't go back on things that have been done, good or bad, which is not easy. And I consider my story as a treasure, because thanks to art, I could transform it in something bigger. As art sublimes pain, we are part of something bigger than our own existence. When we create, we meet one another. We make link with people, nature and the world. Thank you.